Um, how do you feel about some of the new hires and new moves that have happened since the last time I saw you? I was re-watching or listening to our show, and we, we both did say that we thought that the 49ers would have a defensive coordinator by the next time we talked. I didn't think that they were going to have a new defensive coordinator and assistant head coach. But... Neither of us did, no. <laughs> I, I picked that Sorensen, was... and I thought that's what they would do. But clearly Kyle wanted to think about it in terms of, I have reservations about this aspect of this person. And so it's take the strengths of one to cover the weaknesses of the other, and you get this two-headed defensive coordinator. And that might work because you get – the best of both in terms of interface with the players through Sorensen and the ideas through Staley. But the question is who really has the power that if Staley ends up being the one that sets the game plan and if Staley is having a heavy influence in what's happening on game day, then he usurps Sorensen and the players will say, we don't need to deal with Sorensen. He's just a puppet. So Sorensen has to be able to stand up on his own. He has yeah. to be the interface to the players he has to be the one to make the plays. He has to be the one making the game day calls. If they do that, I think that that can work. But it's still a little bit fragile to have two people doing this. And so Staley's going to have to be real careful in how he goes about it. And I not only Staley, but I think Kyle Shanahan. I think when we look yeah, towards Steve Wilkes and maybe the if we, if we were going to look back, the writing on the wall, I think would just be the undermining that happened between Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes earlier on in the season when the 49ers on offense were scoring 17 points, but on defense, for some reason, uh, we're, we're getting blamed for that. Not saying, you know, I, I do understand that, that there was some like noticeable just when you're watching the games setbacks that happened on defense, but I do think as players who really respect and um, believe in Kyle Shanahan, we'll, we'll touch on it later, but Debo Samuel was talking about his belief. Um, I've often referred to the time that they ran the play with Juwan Jennings as the running back. And people are like, why did you not stop this? And they kind yeah. of were like, Kyle Shanahan called it. We just do what he says. You know, we're, we're meant to believe that even if we think it's weird, like he has a reason for everything he's going to do now. In hindsight, that was that was a mistake. But I think that belief has been beneficial for the 49ers when you're talking about the three and five starts and the slumps that they've had in seasons. I think it's helped keep them together, this belief in Kyle Shanahan. But I think when we're talking about Steve Wilkes, it was kind of a downfall for him because it looked early on like Kyle Shanahan didn't believe in Steve Wilkes. So if yeah. Nick Swartzen is supposed to be the guy – to me, I, I kind of agree. There's Jesus is in here, and this might be too, too dramatic, but he says Staley will get fired, bad fit from the start. When we are talking about the start, I do wonder announcing both at the same time um, the hire of of Nick Sorensen with Brandon Staley. I wonder for players, like, does that induce confidence in Nick Sorensen if he is the guy who's coming up with the game plan, kind of talking? Because I will say, and, and I'm interested in your opinion on this, but it's possible that the Brandon Staley hire is um, being a bit blown out of proportion. Anthony Lynn had this same title. John Embry had the title before that. Right. We had never really heard of those guys making influences on the game plan. I think it's more a title to give a guy to pay him to be in the room. I'm even yeah. interested. I know Kyle Shanahan and Staley have uh, the same agent. Right. It didn't look like Brandon Staley was going to get hired. Like it might just be a PR move in that way. Uh, um, maybe, but I, I think that what happens with these is they're sounding boards that okay. as, as Kyle puts together the game plan, he can bounce it off of Staley and say, what do you think? As Sorensen comes up with the game plan, he can bounce it off Staley and they can sort of two minds game together for the defensive plan and saying, how's our best way to attack this, this offense. What do we need to get done? And to have a sounding board in that sense can help. But Staley needs to be behind the scenes. He can't be player facing because that's his weakness. And if he was player facing, it would be undercutting Sorensen and make him less effective. So Staley has to be the Wizard of Oz. He has to stay behind that curtain. And hopefully he does. But if he doesn't, I think that that would be a problem. 
I agree. I like what you're saying is like the players, like Kyle Shanahan needs to make it clear to the players that if if Nick Boss has a question on the game plan, who am I going to? I'm going to Nick Sorensen. He's the one that created right. it. He's the one that has final say. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan has final say, but when it comes to the defensive side, you right. don't want there to be this confusion of, oh, I have a problem with this or I have a question about this. And who am I even turning to? Um, yeah, the that, roles that the, could... the roles have to be sharply defined when you've got a two-headed monster like this. The players need to know exactly where they stand and who they are answerable to in terms of their performance and who they go to with questions. So we'll see how that gets done. I have a, I have a question because someone um, pork. I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce all that, said, I wish we had clarity on what Staley will actually do. And and I am interested, like, do you think, and, and this is purely hypothetical, and I, I wonder if someone, I bet I bet this will happen. Surprise no one asked John Lynch at the at the draft, but, um, or at the combine, sorry. Um, draft is in 50 days, though. Um, but I bet someone will ask during the coaches' meetings or owner, owners' meetings that happen at the end of the month. Um, I do think that we deserve some clarity on on Staley's role. Are you anticipating that he will be like? Do you kind of agree with my um, hypothesis that more he's a mind in the room, or do you think that maybe he is going to be the one coming up with the game plans? Do, who do you no, think will have I, more? Power? I think I think he's mind in the room. He's sounding board. He's someone that can give advice to both Kyle and Sorensen. And I think that he knows that his role needs to be a step removed, that he needs to I like pull back. That. I like that. Like you, like yeah. he even is aware. I like that. Right, right. Well, if he's cognizant of the situation like and know his strengths and weaknesses, I think that's the way that he needs to go about it. Do you agree that this could be a little bit of like image rehabilitation? It um, could be, but I don't think that there's any team that's going to hire Brandon Staley to be a head coach again. After what happened with the Chargers, but it didn't even look like he was going to get a defense. Like the Rams had to hire a defensive coordinator this year. The Rams is where Brendan Staley gets all his hype from, and they didn't even look at him. So I do think it is like his reputation was in the dumps in a in a new way. Yeah, Staley got an interview with Green Bay, and that was it. And the Niners. So this could have been the agent saying that we'll see how this goes. They didn't end up hiring him, but yeah, so they they interviewed him. But I, I do think that there could be something going behind the scenes of the agent trying to help out his client and Kyle saying, you know what? I could use a second mind in the room on this. It, it, it yeah. kind of fits together. It's it's a maybe little bit of serendipity. Yeah. Maybe he'll help Kyle Shanahan go for, be a little bit more aggressive. Who knows? Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're both kind of extremes on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think when you and I were talking about defensive coordinators and just hires in general, a big aspect that we talked about is Kyle Shanahan has to respect them in order to listen to them. Um, well, and to empower them. That yeah. part of the key is that the players need to respect the defensive coordinator and know that he has their interest at heart and that he's going to be with them. He's going to be their guy. And Wilkes, that didn't happen because he didn't have anybody who had his back in the organization. He was alone. And I think that that hurt his situation in that players knew that he didn't have a lot of standing. And so then Shannon says defense let us down here. That that doesn't help Wilkes either. So he was kind of alone in the room, and that hurt his effectiveness, I think. So with Sorensen, you need to have Kyle and everybody fortify him and then that can make him more effective in this role i have two questions one do you think nick bosa is on board with the bringing addition of brandon saley even if he's not like i don't think nick bosa like you know how we kind of felt like there was maybe contempt might be a little bit too strong of a word but there was some blame by nick bosa specifically put on steve wilkes i definitely you know joey bosa has out you know this isn't even a rumor he's like said it in a press conference he's you know yeah. talked um just point about, blank said that you know stay yeah. still good exactly. and you know so, that joey and nick have talked about it what after. is he telling to his right. brother right. um so that is a little bit but i do think the nick Sorensen hire probably was bosa and fred warner type approved 
No, I'm interested. Well, or at the very least, somebody that Kyle could trust to say that he's been working with the players. He's going to have their backing. Yes. Yes. I now I have a question. And maybe, maybe this was just more media fan driven, but I was kind of leaning and you you were on the Nick Sorensen hire kind of early. I remember in our last show, you were leaning towards him. I was leaning towards Daniel Bullock's just because of all the the hype around it. Um, Matt Barrows had did a did a podcast with Tim Kawakami. Now, Tim, Kama, Tim also said that he thought Jeff Ulbrich was going to be the guy. And there was a report that came out that that was never going to fly yeah. by the Jets. The Jets but, never gave permission for that. Um, why do you think that they went with Nick Sorensen over Daniel Bullock? Like, do you have any? I can only ideas? guess. Yeah, I don't really know for certain, but I think part of it is that Sorensen can be there as a placeholder in case Robert Sala gets fired next year in, in New York. That it, it would be easier to bring Sala back in as the defensive coordinator. Well, with Bullock's, it would be more of his career arc since he's young. I think the other factor would be that Bullock's has been really successful in developing the secondary and getting them to a point they need to. So they need him to stay where he's at to continue Mm -hmm. to elevate. Plus, in this draft, they're probably going to be looking at drafting a DB and a safety. So they're going to need Bullock's there to develop who who they pick. So I think it's better served for the organization and the team for Bullets to stay where he is for now. Okay. I, I do. I, I like that. It's kind of like the Chris Kosarek thing, right? Like, I feel like that's every yeah. offseason that there's not a defensive coordinator, you get people being like, well, why not him? And one, I well, think he is, himself has said he's not interested. But two, I right. think the 49ers are like, we want to keep him. And if we if he were to uh, get promoted, uh, we know that that's a fast track to getting hired somewhere else now. Right. Uh-huh. Kosarek has said point blank. Um, I think Grant asked him point yeah. blank that, are you interested in being a defensive coordinator? He said, no, I don't want to watch the film. I, I just want to focus on the D line. So Kosarek is happy in the role that he's in. He doesn't have ambitions to get more than that. I agree. And really quick, uh, Jesus says, can Robert Sala be the head of the defensive coordinator? Can Robert Sala be de- defensive coordinator and Nick Sorensen an assistant? I think that's kind of what Tom next saying, year, but... may, next year possibly. Yeah, yeah. But I think that if, that's that, why that's... we're getting what we've what we've received in terms of this double hire. Is that it no, seems Tom, to me that it, the... it's it's like an experiment. It's that's what can why we the 49ers do for are gonna. That's why the 49ers are gonna draft or not draft. <laughs> They're going to trade uh, for Zach Wilson, and then they're going to wait and bring Robert Sala back, and they're just going to reach out the whole Jets. Just, 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 um, yeah, the yeah, it'd be, it'd be a great way back. to sidle up to they Sala do. to bring in Zach Wilson. No. So funny. So funny. Yeah, that, <laughs> that rumor to me does not make any sense. Um, no. but I thought that was a fun opportunity, you know, just get the whole family together. Um, I, I like how you were viewing it with, because I, I was kind of confused by that this year, too, is there does seem to be that opportunity that whoever is here is kind of a placeholder gap, which is why the Jeff Ulbrick thing made a little sense to me. Because I was like, well, they could have a reuniting. But it makes sense that the Jets are like, we're trying to not get fired, so we're not going to let this guy who who we think is good go. Um People are not excited about the Zach Wilson. No, I, no. I don't know where that rumor came from, but it's been I've, it's been circulating. I've seen it in a couple couple articles. Yeah. Um, I poor Zach Wilson, man. I that 2020 year, and when we're looking at Brandon Staley in the year he did good, it was that 2020. 2020. I feel like people got to throw that out. But the That's COVID year was. Things. Yeah, it, it it's not necessarily emblematic of of what can happen going forward. It was yeah. just it was an off were year in, in a lot a of ways state. for everybody. Yeah, the forty exactly. were not literally playing on their field for more than half um, the, the year. So yeah, definitely a bit different. I want to switch a little bit. Away. Or do you have any thoughts on K, uh, KJ Wright? KJ Wright. Yeah, I think that's a good hire. He he knows his okay. football. The cool thing about Wright is that he played in Seattle with the Legion of Boom. So. He was in the Super Bowl twice. He won once. He called plays pedig- you know, as the linebacker, calling plays on the field. That's a great pedigree is somebody that can relate to the players and say, 
here's what it takes to win a Super Bowl. I've done it. And I should have won two, if not for a terrible play call at the goal line. <laughs> so I think that he would have their ear and that he's he's in a good spot to, to grow and continue to go up. But I like the young talent the in terms pathway? of Bullocks and right. I'm sorry, Ashley. Maybe on the D'Amico path, like maybe Kyle Shanahan. Maybe. Long term. Eventually. But, uh, but I think that, that Bullocks is on that arc right now. Hmm. And then KJ Wright would be beneath him. But I like for what that future can hold for the Niners going long term. Look at the 49ers being a little bit of a factory. Um, I agree. I thought I thought KJ Wright in the interviews I've seen of him sounds like a very intelligent guy who really knows his Yeah, stuff. he knows his ball. Yes. I will say, does anyone remember the Kyrie incident that KJ Wright was a little bit supportive of? I thought that that was like, oh, yeah, yeah, but, that's, you know, that's, that's a that's question, but that, that's yeah. just a weird, it's a weird time, you know, I mean, maybe just blow it off and move on. Yeah. 